our channel teaching and learning so in this channel we talk about IELTS practice business communication English language spiritual message how we can help our kids in learning so here in this video I am going to inform you that we are going to develop the series of videos for the you know basic learners of English language so basic learners of English language they can enhance their listening skills speaking skills reading skills and writing skills they also get chance to promote their uh, you know vocabulary as well as grammar so there will be series of the videos there will be about 40 lessons so there are altogether 13 units uh, main units and inside each unit there will be three or four lessons sometimes two lessons also on the basis of the content or subject matter is placed inside the unit so uh, i will order them Unit 1, uh, there is the title is Good Morning My Dear. So inside that we will have two or three lessons. So I will order them into uh, you know numbers. So for example, lesson 1 and Good Morning My Dear. So inside that vocabulary and grammar. And lesson 2, the title unit is the same. I will talk about you know uh, the conversation and you know reading section of the uh, you know that unit. And in lesson 3, I'll talk about writing and exercises. So this will be more interactive and you will also get chance to engage in, you know, a kind of, uh, you know, assignment, self, self uh, development, self practice assignment also after the videos. And at the, uh, before beginning of every video, I will connect that the second, you know, the following video to the previous one. It means, for example, in unit you know lesson one i deal with unit one inside unit one the title is good morning my dear so inside that the first lesson is about vocabulary related to greeting and the grammar the b verb the auxiliary uh, normal auxiliary we do have let's say if i finish only b verb then when i before i finish my video before i complete to my video I assign you some of the assignments uh, for like a home assignments or you can engage yourself in get, you can practice yourself you can practice the things with your friends and family members you with yourself and you learn better and next day before I start before I start lesson two I connect uh, the previous lesson to the following one so this way we can make our interaction and language learning more interactive more systematic and we can learn with fun and we can use effortless English. I hope all these videos will help you to promote your English in overall developments. And I need to remind you that it is not mainly for the you know, intermediate and advanced level of learners. This is for basic level learners. And more important thing is I will also develop the videos for the intermediate and advanced level. There will be the different, you know, categories. So this category, first, I'll start from the, you know, basic English. So basic English, once I complete the whole tutorials related to basic language learning, then I will start intermediate and then I will go to the advanced level. So I hope this series of the videos will be very supporting for you. If you really want to, uh, you know, find all these videos in order, in system or in one place, why don't you go to my channel, Teaching and Learning, and inside there, there is a playlist, English language. And in English language, you will get all these things. So uh, there is no, uh, there will not be any kind of confusion regarding which, which lesson goes first and which lesson goes in second and last. So there will be the order. So lesson one, these things lesson two lesson three that way i'll order them in number okay enjoy and practice if you practice more you will be very uh, good and better speaker of english and there is a very popular proverb you know practice makes a man perfect thank you very much enjoy the videos Uh, here are some units so we have some units from unit one to unit uh, you know 13 and there are two 
extra section also extra a and extra b so uh, i will order all these videos related to all the all these videos of uh, you know basic english in order from number one to uh, how many numbers there will be on the basis of our lesson if you follow all these lessons in order and if you uh, do not miss the videos then obviously you will have very good knowledge and you will get a kind of beautiful platform where you can practice your english properly so here this video is uh, uh, mainly developed for those learners of english whose english is poor uh, they want to improve little bit more so so let's start okay we have all together 13 units and there are 14 and 15 also in 14 and 15 we learn something extra but from unit one uh, to unit 13 we have deletion so let's go to the uh, unit one what is there in unit one okay so this book that i have designed for the learners of english so the title is unit one good morning my dear in section uh, in a vocabulary good morning good afternoon good evening hi hello hey long time no see how are you what's up so these are the vocabularies we are going to discuss we are going to practice in this unit so the title the topic of this unit is good morning my dear that is the topic that is unit one why i designed this you know good morning my dear for the unit one because our life our language starts from greeting so many people often say that english starts from hello hi and ends with goodbye you accept me so in the beginning whenever we meet the people at that time you know we um, greet the people and there are some specific vocabulary for those for example we often say good morning good afternoon good evening hi hello hey long time no she how are you what's up so these vocabularies are very important for the greeting okay so uh, now let's move to the grammar english language is like other languages in the world and it is the international language learning every language is more or less similar if it is second language for us the most important thing in learning english is the verb more specifically the auxiliary verb and main verb auxiliary verbs are few limited or fixed but main verbs are unlimited and few. so in this unit we learn three normal auxiliary verbs and describe them in the following units they are be do and have verb. this is very important we need to understand you know so this unit from the function functional point of view uh, you know this unit deals with the greeting songs greeting okay. items how we use you know good morning good afternoon good evening hey hello what's up long time no she's this chunks and in grammar we check the verb why did i select verb in the very beginning of learning english language let me ask you one question over here so what is the most important thing when people uh, are getting uh, you know married or in wedding ceremony obviously there should be a boy and a girl bride and bridegroom in the similar way whatever we do what sort of learning we are doing it's always very important to find out the crucial part and here we are learning english language so we need to understand what is most important thing while learning english language if you ask me people might have different opinions i'll give you few seconds okay check imagine or ask yourself what is the most important thing when 
we learn second language or English language. From grammatical point of view, you know, verb is the most important aspect, most important thing we need to practice and learn whenever we practice second language or any language, for example, English. If you want to improve English language, why don't you practice English verbs? Because, you know, verb are the compulsion, compulsory, they are the obligatory part of a sentence. So let me do that one, okay, over here, I will try. Uh, so let me go to the PowerPoint over here. And this is one plus one. So let me go to the new one, okay. Uh, a verb is the most, sorry, most important aspect or uh, you can say element okay element learning which you can say second language and a language you can say l2 also okay that means second language so why verb is most important thing let me give you two uh, you know reason behind this okay regarding the importance of verb in comparison to other elements okay so language every language has the structure like there is a subject subject there is a verb verb and there is object so these three things are there in every language we can say that look at so uh, you know uh, okay subject is there verb is there and object is there so whenever we talk and the pattern is something like you know uh, uh, this is in english obviously the order is s v s v o it means object plus uh, plus object so this is the structure basic structure of english language many people might ask me that okay what about question sentences no this is the transformative type of sentence we will deal those things later on when we learn sentence transformation but the basic structure of english language is svo subject verb object svo pattern pattern okay this is you know, we need to go for that one. HVO pattern or subject, verb, object pattern. So, uh, okay. It is all about English language structure. English language. You can say basic structure of English language or whatever. Let me give you one example of Hindi language then. How it happens, okay? So, uh, so uh, it is uh, yes, O, V pattern. Okay, subject, subject, uh, plus, V, J, C, T, object, uh, plus, verb. Let me give you an example, okay, over here. So for English, the example is, I go to, college okay i go to college it means i is subject go is uh, you know uh, verb and to college is object and here we can take that one in a very uh, basic way and here in uh, case of hindi language let me talk about hindi uh, uh, i college go this is you know Subject, object, verb. May college ja, okay, that, that type of sentence. So in Japanese language also, we have subject, object, verb. Whatever the order is there. The important thing is, verb is important things. So without verb, there is no sentence. That is important. 
Uh, you can say that, you know, um, so the structure of English language often encourages us, this is subject, subject is in bracket, subject plus verb plus, you know, object. So without subject, and without object also, there is the possibility of a sentence, but without verb, there is no possibility. So verb is the crux, obligatory, compulsion in a sentence. It's a compulsory element. It should be over there. Without verb, you can make the sentence. So verb is very important. So that we are going to learn. Obviously, whatever we learn, the important things should be learned first. It doesn't mean that you know, or, uh, you know, object doesn't have uh, subject or object are less important. It doesn't mean that. So verb is more important because it is the obligatory item. It should be there in a sentence. Either it is Hindi, it is Japanese or English language. You know, verb should be there. Whatever language you are going to learn, you should practice, you should focus your attention towards verb. That is very important. Now let's move to that, our session so that so that in the very first unit, I am, you know, uh, designing, I am introducing the verb in gram uh, grammar session. In vocabulary, and the topic is about greeting, and there are vocabularies and chunks which are useful for greeting. We practice those things, and in grammar, we practice verb. And inside verb also, there are two types of verbs. One is main verb, another is auxiliary. So main verbs are um, infinite. We cannot say unlimited. They are they, they have also fixed numbers, but they are many in numbers. So auxiliaries or helping verbs are few. They are finite and they are certain and limited. So we'll start from auxiliary verbs. Okay. So in this unit, we uh, mainly practice be, do and have verbs so be do and have okay be do have. why did i you know choose these three you know normal auxiliary verbs because they are more frequent and they can they can be used frequently if we learn them properly and there will not be many mistakes if we speak for uh, four to five minutes or if we write one to two pages then we will repeat these verbs time and again so they are more frequent in comparison to other verbs also verbs are important and in verbs also auxiliaries verbs are more important auxiliaries and helping verbs and inside auxiliaries also, these normal auxiliaries, we often say, I have named them normal auxiliaries. That means be, do, have. They are more important because they are frequent and they help us to make the sentences. They are very, you know, soft, very, uh, you know, linking, linking verbs also. Okay, let me go that one in our session. So a B verb. Let's move towards B verb, okay? Okay, good. So um, let me make it more, uh, you know, visible to you. Good, I hope you can see that one. B, B is one of the important auxiliary or helping box of English language. It is frequently used in our speaking and writing. The different forms of B verbs are shown as follows. Now we are, we have the idea that B verb is important. You can say this is the number one and other verbs comes after this one because this is frequently used and it, uh, it, it is a kind of, you know, um, it's, it functions like a jam in the bread, you know. So if the flavor of the jam is not good, so it is not better to, it is, we cannot eat properly or we are not satisfied without without bread. So this is something like that. So look at this. 
figure. So there is a B verb. We have a B verb over here. And B verb in one side, it has different three forms, each, M, R. In, the, in this side, there is watch and where. So B verb altogether has five different forms. Each MR was where. Was where is they are used for past tense. Something happened. If we want to show the events or action in the past time, each MR are used for the present. So we need to understand this thing. This is very basic thing. But if we make mistake, when we use English in basic things, so they are not mistake, they are blunder. Either people will understand that we are careless, or we do not have even basic knowledge of English language. So they are the alphabets, alphabets and letters of English grammar. For example, when we start English language, at that time what we do is we learn alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, kind of thing. So here also, when we start learning grammar, do not go any areas. Many teachers love to, you know, start from tense. But I'm not happy. I'm not agree with them. That may be their own style, but you know, it is not that much effective. So whenever I start my class, of grammar to the basic level, I start from verb. As I have already mentioned, verb is the most important element or thing of English grammar or English language, whatever you say. And inside verb also, the normal, you know, auxiliary verb is more important. And inside auxiliary verb, the normal auxiliary is more important. And B verb is the most important element of English language. And this is the number one. This is alphabet A, something like that. This is my, you know, design. How do I support my students? So here, from this video also, I really want to encourage all my audience to go through B verb if you want to start your grammar of English language. Okay, B verb. So before moving, so the different forms of B verbs. Okay, let me go to the same slide over here. So again, I want to go a little bit back. So here, what I do is, verb is the most important. Verb is. Age, okay, that is the one thing, and then uh, the reason. Let me give you a reason why the verb is the most important element of English language. First one is the uh, reasons behind it are number A. There is no, there is no sentence. C and P sentence without verb. So verb must be there. Without verb, there is no sentence. Okay. Number one. So verb is important. Sentence is the form, basic form of language. Otherwise, you say no. Was eyes hungry? River cat. You are saying this word, these words. So this is no more language. If you want to use language, then you should speak, you should use, you should write a sentence. And whenever you go for the sentence, verb is required there. Without verb, there is no sentence. Without sentence, there is no language. So there is no sentence without verb. It means, it means no language without verb. There is no language without verb. Okay, now another reason why do we, why should we 
start from verb. Why? Verb is the most important, okay? Language and the spelling, you know, whatever. B U A. So, spelling, uh, type mistake. Mm. Okay, so here what we do is, you know, uh, one is this is important. Without verb, there is no sentence. Without sentence, there is no language. So, it means without verb, there is no language. So, learn verb, practice verb. And another is verb, verb changes. It's verb changes its form. That is again important. So, learning subject, object, noun, preposition is not that much big deal. But learning verb is a big deal because it changes form. So, same verb might have different forms on the basis of tense and subject also. Sometimes it depends to language to language, it varies from language to language. So, in case of English, let me give you one verb over here, okay? We'll do that one later on also. So, L O K look. Look means to look somebody, to see, for you know, you, you are looking somebody. So the the verb look. This word is not sufficient to learn because this is a verb and it has more than eight, nine different forms over there. So one is verb is important. Another is verb changes. So let me give you you know. Uh, example from my life. Who am I? Over here in this channel, I am your facilitator, your friend, or you can say your teacher or whoever, your motivator. So after this video, I will go home. And there I am a son, I'm a husband, I'm a brother, I'm a father. So it means you know I change but so my role, my function has been changing according to the scenarios and according to the person with whom I deal. So is the requirement, I should not act the same to my father in comparison to my brother. So there will be differences in the role and function. So we need to understand that whenever we change the forms, then we should learn where to use them. So learning verb is not sufficient, learning Verb requires the different forms of verbs also over there. Okay, we'll deal that one also over here. So look at there are five different forms of be verbs. So you cannot use them as your choice or randomly. There are certain areas, there are certain subjects, and there are certain tense where you can use each M, R, O, and where. Well. So the B verb is shown in different forms. The forms are such as each, m, r, was, where. Are different forms of B verb. They are easily understood by their relation with the subject. Look at the relation of each subject to their appropriate or suitable verb. So whenever we try to learn B verb, try to practice B verb, it is not good idea to practice them in isolation. We should connect them with the subjects because they are dependent. Their forms depends on the subject that we use them. So look at in this table. So there are subject of English language and there is the B verb in present and B verb in past. So subject, I, first person, okay? What we say, this is first person singular, technically. Okay, so uh, first person uh, singular, singular. And here, so with I, so here is I, with this I, uh, we use M. If we are talking about the present event, then we are going to say M. And here, if it is past, then we say words. Okay, I am, I am a teacher. I teach at the university. I was a student. I studied in two different schools. So words, I was very shy. 
but now I am frank. I am friendly. In the past, I could not speak English well, but now I am speaking it better to some extent. Okay, so this is all about the relationship between I with B verb. If you are talking about present event, then M with the past was. So the, this is first person singular. Now let's move to the you know second person. Uh, sorry, first person plural. First person plural. Okay. So uh, here, uh, we are, we were, we are friends, we were in image. We were lovers, boyfriend and girlfriends. We are husband and wife. So past and present. We were students, now we are doctor. So this way we use be verb in present and in past. So similarly, there is you. This is second person. Okay, this is second person singular. This is you and the second person singular. S means singular. So you are and you were. If present are past were. So for example. You are very good. You were stupid. You were hardworking person. You are nowadays, you know, you do not like to work, so you are lazy. And there is another you also in English, even though we write the same, but you know, in meaning, we should understand this is one is singular and another is plural. Many students ask me, sir, how do we notice this? You can notice it on the basis of context. Context plays vital role, whether it is singular you or plural you. So plural, second person, this is also second person. Okay? Person, so you are, you were here also. You means there is not a single person, Peter, Rose, James. I'm talking to them, three people over there. It may be hundred. Thousands with whom I am speaking, I say you are if I am talking about present event and you were if I am talking about past thing. So there is another one, he, this is third person, okay? Uh, this is uh, third person singular, okay? So with third person singular, he, we use each. If it is in present, if it is past, then we say was. He is a player. He is a teacher. He is a rich man. These all things are talking about present situation. Now, right now, what is happening? He was very poor in the past. He was a strength in the past, but now he is no more strength. Strength. He is job holder. Uh, nowadays he works. In a similar way, she is there and it. So bo uh, both of them are also third person and singular. So let me copy it from here. Control C. I'll do that one. I'll put over here Control V and Control V. So she is, she was, similar to he, okay? It is, it was, but there is difference. If the subject is, you know, male, we use he. If the subject is female, we use she. If the subject doesn't have, is beyond, uh, neither anything with he or she, then we use it. So all these things, he, she, it, they use each if, they are present and they use was if they are, you know, the uh, past. So these are the things. Okay, let me do that one. Good. 
so now let's move to the they so this is third person but this is plural third person or uh, person plural third person plural third, third person okay so third person plural they are they were so are and were if i'm referring to uh you know mm, Present time, then I use are. If I'm talking about past, it means, you know, uh, where. So this, with the, you know, let me do that one. Wait for a while. I like this one. Okay. So let me do that one. So this is for present tense for blue call. Okay. So it's for blue. And fast tense is for you know fast tense is for uh be verb with fast is is for uh you know uh green okay blue and green and this uh you know subjects are of you know subject let me do that one with the red one okay so this way we need to uh okay let me do that one from here a little bit like a pink okay good so these are the things we need to understand in the very beginning of our session this is all about the bebop how people are using this bebop and uh, okay so let's move towards some useful examples. How do we that one? Type one. So we can categorize B verb in terms of you know the uh, its type. We can categorize them. So type one is Peter is a teacher. Peter is a teacher. Thomas is a doctor. Tom is a businessman. Roach is a housewife. So these are the type one sentence age and examples of B words. Let me put it into red color, okay? And here, similarly, so here we have more examples. We need to go uh, from, uh, you know, more examples over here. So he is, he is a student, she is a cook. You are a farmer. Uh, he is a job holder. Jen is a nurse. Andy, Andy is a worker. So all these are type one category of B verb. So okay, these are some examples of B verb. So let's move to the type two. I have categorized them. There is not that much big, you know, what type distinction regarding the type. So first type. Let's go to first type, second type, and third type, and you will understand. Uh, what are the criteria of the categorization of this type? Okay, so type two. Let me move to the type two. Uh, let me put it into uh, you know blue color over here. Blue color. Okay, good. So type two. He is going to Kathmandu. It's a place. Okay, you are playing uh, volleyball. He is writing a letter. They are eating rice. She is coming from Prokhara. It is running there. So these things, these sentences are categorized into type two. You need not to categorize if you don't like, but to make you clear, I have done this so. And regarding this category, I'll uh, you know mention uh, why I did categorize them. Now let's move to the you know type three. Okay. Uh, so type three sentence age. Uh, they are over here. You know, uh, let me put it in by the green color over here. Okay, good. So can I do that one? What happened? Okay, good. Lovely. So type three. You were a school student. You was very naughty. I was in the lake. Sam, Sam was drinking wine. Stefan and Christina were planting trees. They were uh, 
talking their exam on Monday. They were talking for their exam on Monday. So these three types of B verbs are more casual and popular in English language. First one deals with the use of B verb only. Okay. Second category is B verb with B verb with you know main verb. And the third category is B verb in past tense. Let me do that one here. So what we did is we uh, so uh, three uh, types of example examples type A sentences sentences with V verb only okay E sentences with B verb and N verb okay number C sentences with V verb in past so this way I have categorized there is no reason behind you know doing these things but to make you clear regarding this you know, B verbs so this way we can make it so I uh, okay so this is all about the B verb I hope you have the idea about B verbs and how we categorize them and you know uh, how we make the sentences how they are dependent to the subjects that is very important and more than that let me tell you one thing more over here I have missed you know the first person what does it mean first person the person who is speak and the, it is the pronoun that refers to the speaker speaker may be one or many I we if it is one that is singular if it is more than one it means we that is plural so first person singular means the speaker I am first person uh, plural it means we me and my friends we are speaking so uh, second person means the person to whom we speak the listener who is listening to the speaker that is called second person it is also either singular or plural look at if I am talking to Peter then it is second person singular Peter is one person and who is listening my you know speech and if Peter Rose Christina are listening to me then they are plural but they are second person because they are listening to me and third person are those about whom we are talking they are uh, they are the person about whom we are talking and they are not available in front of the speaker so in terms of that we categorize first person and it is also divided into singular and plural second person it is also divided into singular and plural third person singular and plural so first person singular i plural we second person singular you plural you third person singular he she it plural they so we need to learn these pronouns the subjects whenever we practice the verb here we see the examples of B verbs how the different forms five different forms of B verbs are used with different shots. so thank you very much and for the assignment I assign you make a list of 50 different type of sentences by using B verbs and use them in your daily speaking and writing once you do those things and you can do those things in you know you you can really learn the b verbs and why don't you connect this b verbs with greeting okay you start from greeting whenever you talk you engage in the conversation greeting then introduce about yourself talk about yourself and then you can use these B verbs you can practice the you know introduction uh, you can practice the greeting also so thank you very much thank you and this is the you know lesson one and I will come back with another video of lesson two I hope this is beneficial for you and you can at least have the platform 
this is not sufficient i am not going to guarantee you know this is the very important things i have done very important job what i am doing over here is i am trying to help you trying to support you trying to encourage you create one platform through which at least you can ice break your english and this is mainly for the basic english user this is not designed for advanced user i will have another series for the advanced user i will mention whenever i start that one so this is for basic users so this is lesson 1 i will continue other lessons also in the days to come thank you very much and if you like this video if you think this video is useful please do not forget to subscribe like and comment so that i can improve in the second session better thank you very much